Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about Glide Ajax in ServiceNow. Now for that we're going to look at what is Glide Ajax, we're going to look at why we should use it and we're going to demonstrate on how to set up the components. That will include client script specifically on service catalog item, we're going to look at the script include and we're going to look at this callback function that we've heard, heard about before. Now, we're going to be doing this on some configuration that I've already set up on previous videos. So if you haven't seen those yet, I've added some links in the description, so go and check those out too. So what is Glide Ajax? Well, it's a class that allows the execution of server-side code from the client. So it uses a client-side component and a server-side component. Essentially, client-side script triggers a client callable script include on the server runs a bunch of queries, perhaps if you want to grab some attributes off a reference table, and returns back a value or number of values to the client. So why do we need to use Glide Ajax? After all, if we want to run some queries, we can just do a Glide record query on the client script, like this. ServiceNow has even given us a handy method with getReference, which we could also use, and that looks like this. So if we already have these two different ways to run queries, why bother with Glide Ajax? Well, running a query on the client with either Glide Record or Get Reference means that the user that triggers the query must wait for the code to complete before they interact with the page again, meaning the browser blocks and creates a potential performance issue. Also, client-side Glide Records adhere to ACLs for security purposes. And so the user would need access to the records we want to query, in this case, the sys user table. So aside from this ACL issue, we could make these two solutions asynchronous to mitigate the browser blocking by adding in what we call a callback function. So here's another term that we need to get used to. So a nice way of, of looking at a callback function is that essentially it's a block of code that is executed after another function has finished executing, hence the name callback. So to add this to our glide record query on the client script, it would look something like this. So here you can see we're running our glide record query as we did previously, but this time we're adding in a parameter into the query itself. And what we're adding in there is the callback function as defined here. Now this callback function I've called ABC just to show that we can call that anything we like. Typically we would see it like this. Now once the query is finished the callback function would run and there we're into familiar territory and we do as we did before. We get the email address and we set the value. Now if we wanted to add our callback functionality to the get reference the get reference method does accept a second parameter in the form of a callback function. So on this one, I've called it callback function and we're calling it here. So once we've got the record back, we'd run the callback function and again, we'd do as we did before. So it may be okay to do it this way for one use case, but we still have the challenge of the ACL issue and also with both these approaches, the whole record will be returned. So for example, in the glide record, we get the user record back. On the get reference, we also get the user record back. Now we only want to use one attribute of that record, in which case it's a bit unnecessary to get the whole record back just to use one attribute. And so with all that in mind, ServiceNow's recommended best practice is Glide Ajax. Let's get started and set up our Glide Ajax call. Now, as mentioned, we'll be doing this on a catalog client script, but of course you can use this functionality on any client side script. So I've created a variable set on this catalog item and I did that in a previous video. If you want to see that, I've put a link into the description for you. So within this catalog item, we have a variable set which has two variables, name and email address. Now for this demo, what we want to happen is when we find the name, we ideally want the email address to be pre-populated for us. 
So what we actually need to do is go to the user record of the person selected, find their email address, get that back, and then put it into the email address variable. Let's go and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and create our script include, which is our server side component. So we're going to go into script includes and we're going to create new. Now here we need to give it a logical name. So I'm going to call it that with Ajax at the end. So I know it's an Ajax call. Then the crucial bit is we need to select this box client callable. And what that does is that pre-populates our script with some important information. Now from here we're going to keep this simple. We're only going to create one function. And because we want to get back some user details, and in this case only one attribute, which is email, we're going to call it get user. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to declare a variable and we're going to make that variable equal to a parameter that we are going to send in from the client script. And we'll see that in a second when we create our client script. So this variable is going to be equal to the person's sys ID that we just selected or the user will select. From there we just need to do a query, a glide record query on the user table. and return the email address. Okay, so there's two bits of information we need to remember here. We need to remember the name, copy that, and we need to remember the function name, which is get user. So now we've done our server side component, let's move across and do our client script. So we go into our catalog item. Again, I've done this all within a variable set. So we create a catalog client script within the variable set. I'm going to call this get user details. I'm going to make this an on change client script. The variable on change is the name. And here, we're not going to do anything too fancy. We're not really going to put any if statements in. We're just going to write our Glide Ajax call. And that looks like this. Now here, we've declared a new variable called GA. Again, I could call that whatever I like. It's just whenever we see code, we tend to see GA. Okay, so I've put something in there so it looks more familiar. Now, we're creating a new instantiation of this Glide Ajax. And what I've done there is I copied the name of the script include that I created. So I've added that in, and that's crucial because it knows which script include to call. Then we need to add in a parameter. This one is also crucial. And this tells us the name of the function within that script include that we're going to use. Okay, so that tells me that this sysparm underscore name is reserved, reserved only for this use. So I can't create another parameter with the same name. So we need to add another parameter in. just quickly go back to our script include and we called it sysparm underscore user and we're going to make that equal to new value so remember new value is the value of the field that we're changing so in this case name underscore vs so new value will be a sysid 
So what I've done there is I've declared a new parameter called sysparm underscore user. And it's this is what we're pushing over to the script include. And we obtain it by running this line here. And to finish this piece off, we're going to use get XML. <coughs> okay, so we're not quite done yet. We now need to use what we've already talked about, a callback function. So we need to create a new function. So I am going to call it callback this time. And within our get XML, we then add in the function that we've just created or the function name that we've created. So add before, I could call that a completely different name. As long as what we enter here and here is consistent, it will work. So within the callback function, we need to get the answer back or the response, the return which the script include is sending us. And that looks like this. Okay. So now that we've got our answer back from the server, we then want to set the field. So we would do that in the standard way. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got our answer coming back from the script include and we're setting the value of the email address equal to that answer. In this case, it'll be the email address. So let's give that a go. So we select our user and we get the email address pre-populated. So what we've done, we've created our client script on the variable set. The input to that is the person's name. We then call the client callable script include, which then runs a query based on the person's sys ID that we've sent it, and it will return the email attribute. And then we're using the client script in the callback function, we display that and set that value on screen. Now we've used our Glide Ajax to get a return back to the client script and obviously onto the form. Can we make that better? Well, let's go back and look at the client script. So you may have noticed before, um, and certainly now on screen, we have this rather long winded line here on line 13. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to find that difficult to remember. So there is another method that we can use that makes it a bit simpler. Now, there's two benefits to this, really. One is it's going to be easier to remember for us. And two, at the minute, what we're doing is we're getting the whole XML record back, response XML document element, and we're getting the attribute of answer. Now, in this way that I'm going to show you in a second, all we're going to get back is the answer itself. And we do that quite simply by not using this line. And we add in something called get XML answer. Now within that, that also accepts our callback function. Now doing that means we don't have to use this long line here. But what it does mean is this where we did have answer, which was the variable on line 14, we now use the response. 
So what we've done there is we've changed the method from get XML to get XML answer. And all we need is this one line of code here if we change the value here. Okay. Again, this response could be anything we like. As long as we change it here and it's consistent, it will be fine. So let's save that. And give this a go. Excellent. So again, we've used Glide Ajax and we've improved it for our use case. Well, I hope you found this useful. If there's anything you want me to go further into detail on or different topics you want me to cover, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try and pick those up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so using the subscribe link. And thank you all for watching.